These five keyboard maestro macros supercharged my productivity. They perform slow, tedious tasks in seconds. As always, you can download the macros below. All right, the first macro is very easy. All it does is change the note type of the Anki card that you're adding. By the way, I'm using the Anki flashcard app for the examples in this video, but the same techniques work for macros in any app. Normally, if you wanted to change the note type, you'd have to come click up here and then select a new note type like this, or you could search for a new note type term and press enter. But this is a pretty tedious process. But with this macro, we can change the note type instantly with just a keyboard shortcut. So in Keyboard Maestro, this is actually just three actions. First of all, I set a hotkey trigger to a shortcut of Command Option B up here. And then I use the Type A Keystroke action. So that's this right here. And I set it to do Command N, which in Anki is what opens up this Note Type Changer window. And then I have it use the Insert Text by typing action. So insert text by typing. And then I just have it type out the word basic. And finally, another type of keystroke action to press return. So if I were to manually do that, it type command N, it would type basic, and then press enter. And the same goes for the other two. I just changed the hotkey trigger to change it to a close note type of command option C and change the text down here. And same thing for the English note type, command option E, and it inserts text of English. You don't need to type out the whole name, just enough for the search term to be unique in this list. Up next, you can normally close windows with command W. So if I press command W, it closes the browser window. If I press command W, it closes the ad window. However, if you are on the home screen in Anki, then pressing Command W doesn't work. You actually need to press Command Q in order to close the app. Now, I personally prefer to be able to close the app with Command W even if I'm on the home screen, and that's where macro number two comes in. So I'm going to enable it, and all it does is set the hotkey of Command W to perform an action of closing the front window in Anki. So that is the manipulate a window action, manipulate a window, and I changed it to close, and I set the application to Anki. And now if I go back to Anki and I have different windows open, I can close them with Command W. If I'm on the home screen, I can also press Command W to close it. Very basic, but it allows us to add more customized functionality to the apps we use. Real quick, if you want help making macros like the ones in this video, you can sign up for a free coaching session with me using the top link in the description. All right, macro number three is a bit of a niche use case, but it shows how we should always be on the lookout for macros that can save time. So normally in Anki, when you want to insert an equation using LaTeX, you have to type out this whole string of characters like so. And then in the middle of these two portions of text, you can actually type out the equation that you want. So if I did something like this, it would insert pi in that card. But this is kind of tedious having to type out all this extra stuff every time we want to insert an equation. So that's where macro number three comes in. If I type out the characters semicolon la, it automatically inserts that text and puts my cursor in the middle where I can then begin typing out my math equations. I have another macro that does almost exactly the same thing, except it pastes whatever we most recently copied in between the LaTeX equation. So if I do semicolon LP, LaTeX paste, then it will insert the contents of my clipboard between the appropriate closing and opening statements. So in Keyboard Maestro, the first macro has a type string trigger, and I set it to semicolon LA, and I like to start my type string triggers with something like a semicolon so I don't accidentally enable them. And then what it does is insert text by typing, and it inserts the appropriate text here. And then I use the repeat action and I have it repeat the type of keystroke action of option left arrow 
four times. So if I paste this text in like this and I press option left arrow four times, then it puts my cursor in the appropriate spot in between those two pieces of text. The other version of the macro is very similar. I have a different type string trigger of semicolon LP, LaTeX paste, and at the end it filters the system clipboard. So that's the filter action and I have it filter it with trim white space. So what that does is remove any extra space at the beginning or end of what we've copied and it puts that back into the system clipboard before pressing command V to paste. So notice how when I copied this, there's extra space, there's new lines at the beginning and end, but when I go into Anki and I activate that macro, it inserts it without any extra space. One final note, the reason I use insert text by typing instead of pasting is that it's actually faster in this case to type it out than it is to paste. Macro number four alone has saved me hours of time. It lets you instantly add closed deletion markers to any text that you have highlighted. So closed deletions in Anki are like fill in the blanks that you normally add by highlighting some text. So I'm just gonna restore the previous text and demonstrate how you'd add a closed deletion. So you can highlight some text like this and press this button here to add these special characters around that text. And that makes Anki interpret it as a fill in the blank. You can also press Command Shift C to add that closed deletion text around certain characters, but it becomes very slow if you need to add a lot of these to a card. So if I wanted to add them to, you know, multiple swaths of text within my notes, it would take quite a while to do the entire thing. So that's where this macro comes in. Whenever you activate the shortcut, it prompts you to enter the number of words that you want per close block, as well as the number to start with. So I'm going to do it like this, and you can see it makes blocks of four characters each. So I'm just going to restore the text and now come into Keyboard Maestro to show you how this macro works. So I have a hotkey trigger of Control Shift C, and when I activate that, it first types the command C keystroke to copy whatever text is highlighted. And then it sets a variable called local input to the system clipboard. So if you're not confident with variables, I made an entire tutorial on them, which I'll link to below. But basically what this does is it saves the result of what we just copied to a variable here, which we'll use later in the macro. And then what it does is it uses the prompt for user input action to prompt the user for the number of words per close, as well as the close start number. So previewing that looks like this with a default of nine words and a close start number of one. And then below that, it runs a Python script. I also have a tutorial about running Python scripts, which I'll link to below once it's out. But basically what this does is this is the part that actually processes the text that we copied. So it will take that text and return it with the appropriate closed deletion. So let's say I wanted to start at number two because I already had a first closed deletion here. Then I could just select the rest of the text and start it from number two. And maybe I want eight words per section, pressing enter it instantly formats that text appropriately. And then the last action just pastes our newly formatted text back where we originally wanted it. Macro number five works extremely well with the previous one. It removes all closed deletion markers from whatever text you have highlighted. So if I had multiple closed deletions in my text and I activate the macro, it restores the text to its original form without any closed deletions in it. In Keyboard Maestro, I have this macro set to a hotkey trigger of Command Option R. All it does is three actions, the first of which copies whatever text is highlighted with the Command C keystroke, filters it, removing the closed deletions, and then pastes it in. So what this middle action does, the search and replace does, is it uses a regular expression to find a pattern of essentially two brackets followed by a C followed by some number of digits, 
followed by two colons, and then it captures the text in the middle, so whatever's in the parentheses, and it has a closing two brackets at the end. So then it removes everything except this text, and then pastes that back into your original document. I also have an entire tutorial on regex, which I'll link to as well once it's out. If you made it this far in the video, be sure to subscribe for more cool content, and I'll see you next time.